Welcome back to Krug Stationalis, the Roman Station Church Network. Today we find ourselves at the Roman Station Church for Thursday after the first Sunday of Lent, San Lorenzo in Panis Perna. We encounter so many churches dedicated to St. Lawrence, the deacon martyr, during these days of Septuagesima and Lent. This is a special church which opens for today only. Today we visit, as tradition holds, the place of martyrdom of St. Lawrence. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and to turn on notifications. And when you are done watching, share the video with a family member or a friend. I want to insert a thank you here. Your overwhelming support in the comments and messages, your likes and encouragement to share Rome with you, pushes me every day to share with all of you the beauty I see as I walk the streets of Rome. This channel runs off of your views and support. So I thank you and ensure you I take all of you in prayer to the tombs and holy places of Saint Martyrs of Rome. Now, let's go inside. This church dedicated to San Lorenzo was formerly known as San Lorenzo in Formoso. The change of the name to San Lorenzo in Panis Perna doesn't only come from the street it sits on, Via Panis Perna, but refers to the tradition of the poor clares of the adjacent convent distributing bread and ham, panne and perna, on the 10th of August, the Feast of St. Lawrence, in remembrance of his distribution of funds of the church to the poor prior to his martyrdom. We descend down to the crypt of the church, which houses the place of the saint's martyrdom, where he was roasted to death upon a grill. The story goes that he was being burned on one side and said, all right, I'm done on this side, you can turn me over. St. Lawrence was one of the seven deacons of the city of Rome under Pope Sixtus II, who were martyred in the persecution of the Christians under the order of Emperor Valerian in the year 258. St. Lawrence encountered the future Pope Sixtus II in Spain, whence they both come. Eventually, both left Spain for Rome. When Sixtus became the Pope in the year 257, he ordained Lawrence as a deacon. And though Lawrence was still young, he appointed him first among seven deacons who served in the cathedral church. At the beginning of August in the year 258, the Emperor Valerian issued an edict that all bishops, priests, and deacons should immediately be put to death. Pope Sixtus II was captured on the 6th of August in the year 258 at the cemetery of San Calisto while celebrating the liturgy. He was further executed. After the death of Pope Sixtus, the prefect of Rome demanded that St. Lawrence turn over the treasures of the church. St. Ambrose is the earliest source for the narrative that St. Lawrence asked for three days to gather the wealth. He worked swiftly to distribute as much property to the needy as possible, so as to prevent it being seized by the prefect. On the third day, at the head of a small delegation, he presented himself to the prefect, and when ordered to deliver the treasures of the church, he presented the poor, the crippled, the blind, the suffering and declared that these were the true treasures of the church. On the 10th of August, St. Lawrence, the last living of the seven deacons and therefore the ranking church official, suffered the passion of his martyrdom. There are six churches erected in Rome on the sites traditionally associated with St. Lawrence. The minor basilica of San Lorenzo in Damaso is the site where he performed his duties as deacon of Rome and the minor basilica of Santa Maria in Domnica of the Navicella, the Roman station church for the second Sunday of Lent, is the site where he customarily distributed alms to the poor. The church of San Lorenzo in Miranda, which sits in the forum, is the site of his sentence and condemnation by the prefect of Rome. The church of San Lorenzo in Fonte is the site of his imprisonment with the centurion Ippolito and houses the fountain in which the saint baptized his fellow prisoners. Then we have this church of San Lorenzo in Panis Perna, the site of his martyrdom where he was roasted to death. And we have the papal minor basilica of San Lorenzo Fuori de Mora, the site of his burial and tomb. Also in Rome, there are three other churches dedicated to San Lorenzo, though not associated with his life. 
These are the minor basilica of San Lorenzo in Lucina, which possesses the relics of the gridiron, upon which the saint was martyred. Then the church of San Lorenzo in Palazzo, the pontifical sanctuary of the Holy Stairs. These are the Scala Santa, the holy stairs which sit next to the Archbasilica of San Giovanni in Laterano. The Scala Santa was originally a private papal chapel, when the edifice that houses it was a papal palace. It is called the Scala Sanctorum because it has housed some of the most precious relics of the Roman Catholic Church, hence the name Holy of Holies. And then we find the church of San Lorenzo in Piscibus, which is near St. Peter's Basilica. Tradition holds that construction on this site was first done in the reign of Emperor Constantine, only 100 years after the martyrdom of St. Lawrence. And then in the 5th century, this church became one of the Linton Roman Station Churches for the Thursday of the first week of Lent. One is struck by this martyrdom of San Lorenzo, painted in the late 16th century by Pasquale Catti, a pupil of Michelangelo. Driven by the example of San Lorenzo and his care for the poor, St. Bridget of Sweden used to beg for alms for the poor outside of this church. And it was before this crucifix that she prayed, a crucifix from the 14th century. We have the example of St. Lawrence and St. Bridget, but the name Panis Perna indicates something even further for today's Roman Station Church. And for this, we look to the traditional liturgy of today's Station Mass. A monk priest friend wrote to me this morning recalling a striking relevance of the communion verse prayed in today's Mass. Today at San Lorenzo in Panis Perna, or as the Missal states, Pane Perna, we recall that the street of Panis Perna was a market street for food products in ancient Rome, Pane, bread, and Perna, which is essentially prosciutto. Understanding that, bread and flesh meat, the communion verse takes all of these Roman realities and elevates them, wherein the priest recites the very words of Christ from John chapter 6, verse 52, saying, Panis quem ego dedero, caro mea es proseculi vita. That is, the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. For what else do we walk this pilgrim journey than to recall the salvific love of Christ crucified, the mystery in which we enter at the sacrifice of the Holy Mass and receive the bread of eternal life, Jesus himself, body, blood, soul, and divinity. Thank you for joining us today at the Linton Roman Station Church of St. Lawrence in Panis Perna, one of the many churches dedicated to the third patron of the Church of Rome. I'll see you tomorrow.